Today we're going to be performing peri care of a male with a brief change and hand washing. So this is the way that Headmaster wants you to perform the skill as of July 1, 2018. You can find this skill in the Headmaster booklet online. You can also find the um, mock skills checklist online. You should look at that. Be aware that the mock skills checklist may not be updated to the July 1 handbook. So be familiar with this scenario. It's the way that you need to perform the skill for state. It is different from how it's presented in the book because different skills are completely separate in the book, like hand washing is separate from peri care, is separate from a brief change, all in the handbook. So this is the way Headmaster has it all combined so they can check you off on several different skills at once. We're gonna get started now. Knock, knock, knock. Hey Terry. I'm Misty, I'm your nurse today. We're gonna to be doing a brief change to get you cleaned up. So I'm gonna clean my hands here and I'm gonna make sure we have all our supplies and pull our privacy curtain. So here's our privacy curtain. Now for supplies, what I have here is a basin for our warm water. I have our soap. I have a barrier, which by the way is not indicated in the checklist. However, I like to use it and I believe the book wants you to use it to keep their linens clean. And then I have some washcloths and a towel to dry. So you can take your basin over to the sink and turn on the water, make it nice and warm. You should be checking the temperature to make sure it's nice and warm for your patient because you are going to be cleaning them private. You're going to fill your basin at least a third to a half full. And I like to put it on top of a paper towel on the table so that way if it dripped on the bottom, it doesn't get the table all wet. So once you have your nice warm water, you can go back to your patient's room. You can check your bed break as you go because you are going to be leaning up against the bed cleaning your patient. You want to be sure that everybody's safe. So your privacy curtain's already pulled. I have your supplies here for you to work with. I'm just going to move this privacy curtain out of the way. Make sure you'll have more room at state for your privacy curtain. You'll want to be sure that you have a trash can available with a bag in it that's easily tied because that's how you're supposed to dispose of your dirty grief. You can go ahead and have your patient check the water as it does say to do that in, in your book, not in state, but it does say in your book. So Terry is going to check the water and um, in the book it'll say your patient will indicate whether or not it's okay at state. They will not do that because they cannot indicate whether or not you're doing anything right or wrong. So he's checked his water. I'm going to clean my hands again, put on a pair of, of gloves. All right, Terry. So we're gonna raise your head up, the bed up actually, so I can reach you a little bit better. I'm gonna lower the head of the bed so you're a little more comfortable because you are gonna be turning to your side. I'm gonna put the call bell where it's an easy reach. All right, Terry, so I'm going to pull your blanket down. The book, I believe, does tell you to use a privacy blanket it is now not needed in the headmaster skill. You will not be marked off if you decide to use a privacy blanket on your patient, so you can do it without a privacy blanket, but you do need to be telling your patient everything that you're doing. So Terry, I'm just gonna remove your blanket so it doesn't get dirty, and I'm also gonna raise your blanket up here, or your, your gown up here so I can expose your brief. So what we're gonna do, Terry, is I'm gonna place a barrier under your bottom Please note that the headmaster skill does not require that you place a barrier under your patient anymore. However, if you think about it, you're supposed to be taking off a soiled brief. Once you take off the soiled brief and your patient lays back down on the bed, he'll be soiling his sheet. So in all practicality and real life, you don't want your patient laying on a dirty sheet. So what I'm gonna do, Terry, is have you turn a little bit to your side. And I'm going to place a barrier. Be sure you're very aware of where your patient's head is going. So I'm going to place this barrier. I'm actually out of disposable barrier, so I'm using a pillowcase, but we're going to pretend that this is a disposable barrier that we're placing under our client to keep his bed nice and clean while we're performing this skill. Okay, Terry. So here's your barrier. And I'm just going to pull it through to make sure you stay clean. All right, Terry, 
So what we're going to do here is remove his old brief. And I'm going to remove this other side. I'm going to tuck the tabs in on this side so it's easy to remove when he turns to one side. You take the brief off, tucking it towards the inside. Tuck it towards the middle. All right, Terry, you're going to raise one leg. I'm going to cross your one arm, your left arm, over your side and turn the patient to the side. Now at state, if you need help turning the patient because you're expecting or maybe your back hurts a little bit that day, you can always ask the nurse examiner to help you turn the patient to his or her side. Right now it's a heat. So we're going to turn him to his side. We're going to remove that brief. Bring him back to his side. Go ahead and place his leg in a more comfortable position. And we're going to put this dirty brief into that trash can, into the bag, and you're going to go ahead and tie it. It doesn't say to throw it away or to tie it, but what else are you going to do with it? You're not going to sit it on the floor or on the table, so go ahead and put it in a trash can. It also does not tell you in the headmaster booklet to remove your gloves, but you just touched a soiled brief. You want to remove your gloves, throw them away, you should hand hygiene, and you should put on a new pair of gloves because you are now going to be touching clean products that you need to clean your patient with and a clean brief. You don't want stool or urine or whatever it is that was on his brief all over your hands. And think about in real life situations, you might be cleaning up things like C. diff or blood. Maybe they have a GI bleed or all kinds of things that you find in a brief. So now you can get to the cleaning part. So you have your warm water. You have your washcloths and a clean brief ready to go. Here's your soap. I just used the one basin and then I'm going to go ahead and put my washcloths in the water. I'm going to get them all wet. Then I'm going to get my first washcloth. Be sure you wring it out. I'm going to fold the washcloth as I've shown you how to do in skill number four. Keep the big part in my hand and all the little pieces, the separate pieces where I can fold them out. So I'm going to put some soap in the center of the washcloth, I'm going to soap it up and then I'm going to keep my washcloth just like this. So to clean the mail, it's just very similar to peri care or, or catheter care, but you actually have to do the whole penis. So what you're going to do is first please note whether or not you have a circumcised or an uncircumcised male. If you have, and there are some mannequins out there for state testing purposes that will have an uncircumcised penis, you need to be sure that you clean the tip, the glands of the penis first, rinse it, and then place the foreskin back where it belongs. So for cameraman, we'll zoom in just a little bit. I'll kind of show you what you would do for an uncircumcised male. What you would do is pull the sheath back on the mannequin. There is no sheath here, but we're gonna pretend that we would pull the sheath back on the mannequin. And what, if that, what that's gonna do is expose this part of the penis, the tip of the penis, the glands. So you're gonna clean it much like you would do for catheter care, but you're gonna clean using the center of your washcloth, not the side so you don't contaminate everything, just the center of your washcloth. And you're gonna go in a circular motion around the urethra of the penis towards the shaft. Flip that cloth over. You're gonna go around the tip of the penis in a circular motion toward the shaft. Now you've cleaned just the glands of the penis. This is dirty. It needs to go in your wash basin. Where did I put the wash basin? There's a wash basin at the foot of my bed. So now I need one more washcloth. What I'm going to do is wring it out and I'm gonna fold it in the same manner. And then I'm gonna rinse just the tip of that penis again. I'm gonna rinse the tip of the penis, circular motion down towards the shaft. I'm gonna rinse the tip of the penis in a circular motion down towards the shaft. This is now dirty, it's soiled, so it's gonna go into the laundry basin at the foot of the bed. You just washed and you just rinsed. You do not need to dry the tip of the penis. So what you would do is fold the um, uncircumcised, the foreskin back over the glands of the penis. So that's how you would add um, that portion to an uncircumcised male cleaning. After this, it's all the same for every male that's circumcised. So now we're gonna clean the shaft of the penis, the scrotum, 
and then the rectum. So all they're looking for are certain areas. And I have a way that I like to wipe it and it gets everything completely done. So what you have is one washcloth. You're gonna wet it. You're gonna add some soap to it. And then you're gonna fold it. And what I like to do is to wash the whole shaft of the penis from top to back. So you're gonna start at the tip of the penis, not right at the urethra, but pretty much at the tip of the penis, wash the whole top side of the penis towards the shaft. Flip your cloth over, and then you're gonna wash the whole left side and underside of the penis towards the shaft. And then you're gonna wash the whole right side and underside of the penis towards the shaft. And then you still have another area. You can lift the penis up and you can wash the whole underside of the penis or the underside, the very bottom underside of the penis, the top of the scrotum and back towards the rectum. So you've gotten the whole penis, all areas, that's all they're looking for. A lot of nursing students want to wash everything that's here, but it does waste a little bit of time because at state, all they're looking for are these specific areas. They wanna see you clean the tip of the penis, the urethra. They wanna see you clean the glands, the shaft of the penis, the scrotum, then the rectum. That's all they're looking for. So right now, that's all I'm gonna show you. So once you clean it, you're gonna, you're gonna rinse it in the same exact way. So you're gonna have your wet washcloth to rinse. You're gonna fold it in the same way and you're gonna rinse in the same way we just washed. So you're gonna wash the whole length of the top of the penis all the way back towards the base. You're gonna wash the whole left underside of the penis all the way back towards the base. Or rinse, sorry. Then you're gonna rinse the whole right underside of the penis down the shaft towards the base. And then you're gonna lift up the penis and you're gonna rinse the whole underside, top part of the scrotum towards the back and the rectum. Now that's all clean. So now all you have to do is pat dry. So this goes into the laundry. And if my assistant will grab two more washcloths, I was a little bit short on washcloths and just place them in the basin, that would be great. Oh, I have two more. Okay, so now what we, what we need to do is to pat dry. So what all you have to do is literally just pat dry. So you're gonna pat dry just this area. And you can actually save this towel for later because if you'll notice, the headmaster list does not say whether or not you have to have a clean towel. Um, I don't believe the book says that you have to have a clean towel either, but if you want to be absolutely certain, you can switch your towel out. But I like to use the same towel, just a different part of the towel to dry the back part of the body. So now we've cleaned the whole front of the patient. What you can do, and dried, what you can do is go ahead and pull his gown down. And we're gonna turn Terry over to his um, left side. I'm actually going to turn him towards me. So I'm gonna switch sides so you guys can see what's going on here. So after you've cleaned the front of the patient, you would turn your patient so you can get the rectal area, which is what they're looking for. So now what we're gonna do is say, okay, Terry, now we're gonna turn to the side. You're gonna lift your leg up to give you a little bit of leverage and we're gonna turn over to your left side. At this point, the nurse examiner can help you turn the patient to the side and hold them if you need them to. I like to pull his leg back and have him hold himself and hopefully that will help because um, I can do this pretty much one-handed. So what I'm gonna do is get my clean washcloth, wring it out. I'm going to apply a little bit of soap, get it nice and soapy, get that cloth out of the way the gown out of the way. And then I'm gonna fold my washcloth. And then all they're looking for here, guys, is for you to wash, if you'll zoom in just a little bit, cameraman, you'll wash the top, this top part of the scrotum, towards the underside of the scrotum, towards the rectum. That's all you need to wipe. The bottom part of the scrotum, to the back part of the scrotum towards the rectum and that's it you can go ahead and get the buttocks if you'd like to wipe one buttock and then wipe the other buttock and you're done that's all you have to wipe 
This will go into your laundry at the foot of the bed. And then you get another washcloth. Ring it out, and this is just water. So you hold your washcloth. You're gonna rinse the back part of that scrotum under the scrotum towards the rectum. I like to rinse that part twice. You're gonna rinse towards the rectum. And then you can rinse his booty cheek. And then you can rinse his other booty cheek. Now this is dirty. You can throw that into your laundry basin. It should be at the foot of the bed. And then you can use that towel and you can pat dry his bottom. And then to be sure he's completely dry, you can pat dry his bottom again. And then this would be considered soiled. While he's on his side, before you lay him down, whatever he had on his bottom is on your dirty pad here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll this dirty pad up while he's on his side so you can remove it. He's now clean, right? So we're gonna lay him back down onto his side. Be sure he's covered. And then you would need to go to the other side of the bed. I'm gonna go ahead and take my table with me so I don't have to go back. And then I'm gonna remove the rest of that towel. Okay, Terry, lift up just a little bit. I'm gonna remove the rest of my soiled barrier and I'm gonna put it in the laundry. My hands are dirty. I just cleaned his bottom and took out a soiled pad. So I'm gonna remove my dirty gloves. I'm gonna hand hygiene again. And then I'm gonna put on a clean pair of gloves. I don't wanna to touch a brand new clean brief without changing gloves. So this is gonna take some practice for you guys because Headmaster's um, list does not have all of these glove changes in it. So you need to know when you change your gloves. All right, so now I have on clean gloves and now we have our brief. So you have your brief ready? Say, okay, Terry, we're going to apply our brief. So what you can do is have Terry roll to his side. Okay, Terry, onto your side for me. And you're gonna tuck your brief in. While you're under here, make sure his gown is not all wadded up under him and that he'll be comfortable. And come on back, Terry. And hopefully you tucked the tabs in so you can easily get to them on the other side, just like I did. And then you're gonna pull the brief up. You're gonna secure it nice and comfortable in between his legs. And then you're gonna open it up completely and close your tabs. You're gonna go ahead and pull his gown down. You're gonna cover your patient back up. Make sure he's nice and comfortable. And then you're gonna raise the head of his bed back up where he was. Make sure he's nice and comfortable. You can lower the bed to a nice safe height for your patient. All right, Terry, that looks pretty good. Make sure your patient has his call bell in reach and you're gonna clean up your supplies. So I'm gonna take his dirty things over to wash my hands and throw out his supplies. So first I'm gonna throw out all the dirty linens that I brought into the room. Anything extra that you brought is considered dirty. And actually I wouldn't have removed my gloves. I would have gone ahead and rinsed this out rinsed your pan and then dried it and then put it in his soiled utility and then for me I would have actually removed my gloves then thrown them away and now I would wash my hands I'm going to turn on the water make sure your hands are nice and wet apply your soap Make sure you rub, scrub for 20 full seconds, or it doesn't count. 
you have to get your wrist and under your fingernails so you need to make that motion to get your wrists and under your fingernails or it's not going to count. Again, say your ABC is nice and slow and you should be covered. Rinse your fingers, your hands, using your wrist to twist them around, point your fingers down and then you're going to dry your hands. Make sure they're nice and dry. Use a clean paper towel. Turn off your faucet and throw it away, but don't crinkle it because that's recontamination. And then you're done.